Do you believe in a higher power, a god, or maybe you call it the universe, or maybe you refer to it as a quantum field, or source, or the matrix? What are all these terms referring to? Well, even though these are all different terms, they're all terms that refer to one thing, that force. That force that seems to govern everything. And everybody seems to have their own opinion on what this force is. But the truth is that nobody really knows for sure what it is or how it really works. But people are always arguing over who's right, as if they did know for sure. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take several different perspectives on what this force is. From a law of attraction perspective, a religious perspective, a scientific perspective, psychological, physiological, etc. And I'm going to compare them. But rather than looking at the differences, I'm going to focus on what they all have in common. Because when you look at it that way, even though they all have their own different ways of explaining it, even though they all use different terminology, you will notice that you're all trying to convey the same message. And that message is that your power lies within your mind. Let me explain to you exactly what I mean. Let's start by looking at it from a law of attraction perspective. Now you're probably aware by now is that everything in the universe is made of energy. Energy just vibrating at different frequencies, right? And this has been scientifically proven, that everything is energy. And the law of attraction states that like attracts like, or in other words, like energies attract like energies, or like frequencies attract like frequencies. And you've probably heard all the different phrases like whatever you think about most, whatever you focus on is what you attract, or thoughts become things, or whatever you put out is what you get back. There's many different phrases, but the bottom line is that whatever is going on in your mind is determining your vibration, and you attract things that resonate on the same frequency. So your thoughts create your reality. In a nutshell, that's the law of attraction. Now let's look at it from a religious perspective. Now there are a lot of different religions out there and they all have their different gods that they worship, right? But generally, religion says that there is a higher power, a God, that created the universe. And if you pray to God, God will answer your prayers and give you what you ask for, right? Pretty similar to the law of attraction if you think about it, right? Now let's look at it from a scientific perspective. Let's look at quantum physics. Now quantum physics is really difficult for most people to understand, so don't feel bad if you don't understand it. I don't want to get too technical for this video and lose you guys, so I'm just going to simplify it and just go over it real quick, so bear with me. Now, all physical matter is made up of atoms, and atoms are made up of smaller particles called electrons. But quantum physicists discovered that electrons behave like waves and particles. Think of a wave as a bundle of possibilities, and think of a particle as one possibility. When an electron is not being observed, it behaves as a wave. It exists in multiple positions simultaneously. It is in all possible states at the same time. This is known as superposition. But the moment an electron is observed, it then behaves like a particle. It simultaneously collapses into one position, one possibility. So what does this mean? Well, like I said, all physical matter is made up of these particles. So what quantum physics suggests is that all physical matter exists in all possible positions simultaneously when it is not being watched. But the moment it is observed, it collapses into the position that the observer is expecting to see. So in other words, there's an infinite number of alternate realities and the one that's experienced at any moment is subjective to the consciousness of the observer in that moment. Quantum physics suggests that the universe is like a quantum field that transforms to reflect the state of the observer's mind. What the observer is expecting to see is what the observer gets. Now this may sound a little crazy, right? But then again, quantum physics is pretty crazy. But it is science. There's actual scientific experiments that were conducted that show this. But if you think about it, the concept really isn't much different from the first two examples I gave, of the law of attraction and religion, where what you ask for is what you get, right? So the mind shapes your reality. But like I said, I don't want to get too technical for this video, so rather than me trying to explain quantum physics to you any further, I'm just going to link up a few other YouTube videos that other people have already done that explain it pretty well. So if you want more information on that, then check those videos out. I'll go ahead and leave the links in the description below. There's also a DVD that I recommend that explains it pretty well. It's called Down the Rabbit Hole. So if you want to check it out, I'll go ahead and leave the link to that as well. But anyways, that's quantum physics. Take it or leave it. Now let's look at it from a psychological perspective or a physiological perspective. Let's look at the placebo effect, where a person's belief or what the person is expecting to experience is what creates the reaction in their body. Now the body is an energy field, right? The universe is one big infinite energy field that includes everything, but our bodies are also an energy field, just on a smaller scale. So our bodies, this energy field, responds to our expectations. The placebo effect is due to a person's expectations. So again, the concept is very similar to the other examples that I gave. The mind determines the outcome. Now let me give you one more example. Let me share this experiment with you that was conducted by a Japanese doctor named Dr. Masuro Emoto. What he did was he took several samples of water and exposed each sample to different thoughts. So for example, he would direct thoughts of love towards one water sample and direct thoughts of happiness towards another water sample and then maybe direct thoughts of hate towards another water sample. 
Then he crystallized the water samples by freezing them and observed them under a microscope. And what he found was that each sample had formed different patterns depending on the type of thoughts that was directed towards that sample. He also noticed that the samples that were blessed with positive thoughts formed more beautiful snowflake-like patterns, and the samples that had negative thoughts directed towards them formed uglier patterns, which were incomplete and asymmetrical with dull colors. Here are the photos of some of those water samples. The first one is a photo of the water sample that was blessed with thoughts of love. And the second one is the photo of the water sample that was blessed with thoughts of peace. And the third one is a photo of the water sample that had the thought, I hate you, directed towards it. And the fourth one is a photo of the water sample that had the thought, you fool, directed towards it. So you can clearly see a significant difference in the patterns created by positive thoughts versus negative thoughts. Now think, if our thoughts can do that to water samples that are at a distance, not physically attached to us, then think about what our thoughts are doing to our bodies, considering our bodies are 70 to 80 percent water. And remember that the Earth is also 70% water. So this example is pretty similar to the placebo effect. But the point I'm trying to make here is that our mind has an influence on energy fields. Whether it's the whole energy field of the universe, or the energy field of our bodies, or the energy field of a glass of water. So now, let's take all those examples and compare them. But rather than looking at the differences, let's look at what they all have in common. Because when you look at it that way, you will notice that they all seem to point in the same direction. Even though they all explain it in different ways, even though they all use different terminology, you will notice that they all have two main things in common. Let me show you what I mean. Every single one of those explanations, whether you look at it from a religious perspective or a scientific perspective, all say that there is some kind of higher power or energy field. And everyone just calls it something different. Some people call it God, some people call it the universe, the quantum field, source, infinite intelligence, the matrix. Those are all different terms, but they all refer to the same thing, that higher power or energy field. So that's one thing that they all have in common. The second thing is that somehow our minds influence this higher power, this energy field. We may not know exactly how, but evidence shows that it definitely does. And there are also different terms that are used to refer to the mind. Thoughts, beliefs, prayer, intentions, consciousness, imagination. All different terms, but they're all associated with the mind. So there's many different explanations that are all similar as far as the message that they're trying to convey, but they just use different terminology. I mean, I'm sure you've heard the saying, God is love, right? Well, what is love? Love is energy. When you give someone love, you're directing energy towards them. Energy flows where attention goes. It's the same thing, just different terms. They say that God is everywhere, right? Well, energy is everywhere, because everything in the universe is made of energy. They say that God created everything. Well, everything is made from energy. The point is that it doesn't really matter what language you use to explain it. Everybody uses different terminology. The main thing that matters is that you get the message, and that message is that your mind creates your reality. And this has been preached to us since ancient times. The greatest minds in history have been trying to tell us this for thousands of years. They just say it in different ways, but the message is all the same. These teachings have been around for a long time, but for some reason most people just can't make that connection. They're too busy arguing over who's right. Let me explain something to you. Take Christianity for example. Now for Christians, Jesus Christ is their savior. That's who they worship, that's who they pray to, right? Now for Hinduism, they have multiple gods. For example, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, and Krishna. Those are gods that they worship, who they pray to. So you have a Christian and a Hindu, two completely different people who pray to different gods. Now, most religious people live their whole lives believing in their god, living a 70, 80, 90, 100 years old, keeping faith in their god. Now that's a long time if you think about it, right? But do you think that a person would continue to believe in something for that long if they never received validation that it was true? Do you think that a person would continue to believe in their God for 70, 80, 90 years if their prayers were never answered? If their prayers were never answered, then they would lose faith pretty quickly, right? But if their faith remains for that long, then obviously their prayers are being answered, right? Or at least some of them. At least enough for them to still keep their faith. But you have two different people who pray to different gods, but both of their prayers are being answered. So what's going on here? Could it possibly be that there are multiple gods? Or is it that there is only one God, one higher power, one energy field that responds to everybody's prayers, regardless of what their religion is, and everybody just calls it something different? Every religion has their own idol that they have in place to represent this higher power. They all have their own different names for it. They all have their own image of what it looks like, and they all have their own stories behind it. But the truth is, it doesn't matter what you call it. You could call it God, you could call it the universe, you could call it the quantum field, source, the matrix. You could even call it Bob or Susan. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't really matter what you think it is or what you think it looks like. You could see it as a supernatural being, a God that's doing the creating, or you could see it as an energy field that transforms. 
There's different ways to look at it. There's different explanations, different terminology that's used, different metaphors. You just have to pick the one that resonates with you, the one that you understand. Because the truth is that nobody really fully understands how the universe works. Everybody just tries to explain it in their own different way. But every explanation seems to point in the same direction. So the language that you use to explain it doesn't really matter, as long as you get the message. Because it's the message that's significant. And that message is one, there is a higher power, an energy field, and two, somehow our minds influence this higher power. But here's the thing, even though you now know it's the mind that communicates with this force, and this force just responds, you still have to understand how the message is being communicated. You have to understand the language of the universe to be able to communicate with it effectively. So what's the language of the universe? Well, remember, everything in the universe is made of energy. Energy just vibrating at different frequencies. And everything is constantly shifting, moving in and out of form, attracting and repelling, depending on the vibration of those energies. So the language of the universe is vibration, frequencies, because everything is energy. So to be able to communicate with the universe effectively, you have to be able to control your vibration. You have to control your vibration to control the message that is sent out to the universe. So how do you control your vibration? Well, the vibration that you're emitting at any given moment is determined by how you feel in that moment. And how you feel is determined by your emotions. And your emotions are influenced by your thoughts. Because every thought that you think evokes an emotion. When you think positive thoughts, it evokes positive emotions. When you think negative thoughts, it evokes negative emotions. And that determines the vibration that you give out. So your thoughts influence your vibration. But your thoughts are governed by your mind. So it's your mind that controls your vibration. Your state of mind at any given moment determines your vibration in that moment. So again, it all goes back to the mind. Are you starting to see a trend here? So you want to control your thoughts, because every thought that you think, any beliefs that you have, the images that you hold in your mind, all affect your state of mind, which determines your vibration, and the universe just responds to your vibration. So your vibration is the message that's given to the universe. It's not the words that you speak that's the prayer. It's your vibration that's the prayer. You can verbally pray for something and not get it because your vibration was saying something else. The universe responds to your vibration, not your words. And you have to understand that prayer is not the only time that you're communicating with the universe. You're communicating with the universe in every single moment, even when you're not consciously praying. What do you think a prayer is? Let's think about this. A prayer is nothing more than a thought. A thought with a specific intention, right? And every thought has a frequency that influences your overall vibration. So your dominant thoughts are what is determining your overall vibration. It's not just the thoughts that you're thinking while you're praying, but it's also the thoughts that you're thinking in between those prayers that's affecting your vibration. Those thoughts are just as much being communicated to the universe through your vibration as your conscious prayers are. So really, every thought that you think is a prayer. If you're spending a few minutes every day consciously praying for something that you want, but in between those prayers you're thinking negative thoughts that conflict with those prayers, then you're not going to get what you consciously prayed for. What you get is going to be a reflection of your dominant thoughts. Whatever your dominant thoughts are, that's the prayer. If you have conflicting thoughts, it's the one that you think of the most that becomes the prayer. See, you don't necessarily get what you want, you get what you ask for. The problem is that most people don't realize what they're asking because they're not aware that their vibration is the prayer, not their words. So when they don't get what they wanted, they think that their prayer wasn't answered. But really, their prayer was answered. They got exactly what they were asking for. They just weren't aware of what they were asking for. So you can see what I mean when I say that you have to understand the language of the universe to be able to communicate with it effectively and get what you want. But that's one of the downsides of religion, because religion doesn't explain that. Religion doesn't explain how to pray effectively. Religion says there is a God, a higher power, and when you pray to God, then your prayers will be answered. But there's a lot of missing information in those instructions. You have to remember that religion is an ancient teaching. Religions were created thousands of years ago. I believe that the first documented religion was created 5,000 years ago. That's a long time ago. If you're old enough, try to remember how different things were just 20, 30 years ago. Think of all the advances we've made in those 20, 30 years. Think about how different people thought back then. How different their mentalities were just 20, 30 years ago let alone 5,000 years ago. I mean, thousands of years ago, they didn't have the knowledge that we do today. They didn't have the technology that we do now. But they were still aware of a higher power. They just didn't understand it. I mean, we still don't fully understand it, but we have a better understanding now than we did back then because of the evolution of our knowledge and intellect. But back then, thousands of years ago, they didn't have that knowledge. Back then, they would create mythical stories in order to explain the forces of the universe. And what is a myth exactly? The definition of a myth is a traditional story, especially one concerning the early history of people or explaining some natural or social phenomena, and typically involving supernatural beings such as gods and goddesses. Well, that's basically what religion is, a traditional story that was created to try and explain how the universe works, using gods and goddesses, these mythical characters to represent the forces of the universe. Imagine going to a college that never updated their textbooks. 
Say that you were majoring in computer science, but the textbooks that they were using were 20 years old. Now, do you think that you would be receiving the proper knowledge that corresponds to today's technology? No. Well, that's pretty much what's happening with religion. These teachings come from books that are thousands of years old. I mean, the message is still there, but the language that's in these books don't resonate with today's younger generations. The language needs to be translated into modern terminology to decipher the message. But people don't want to do that because they see it as taboo to change those ancient teachings. So the message gets lost. And that's why a lot of people's prayers aren't answered, or at least they don't get what they wanted. Because it's not enough to just pray, you have to know how to pray effectively so that you do get what you want. But that information is missing from those ancient teachings. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bash religion or anything. I come from a very religious family. I may not consider myself as a religious person. I mean, I do believe in a higher power, but I just choose not to follow a specific religion. But my whole family is Catholic, so the last thing I want to do is put down religion. That's not my intention. What I am trying to do is decipher the message for you. A message that was lost in translation. But it's not just religion. Parts of the message is lost in all the other explanations as well, and all the other examples that I gave. I'm just saying that there's many different explanations out there, different terminology that is used, different metaphors. You just have to choose the one that resonates with you, the one that you understand. And know that what works for you may not work for someone else. Everyone is different. Everyone learns in different ways. Everyone comes from different backgrounds, different cultures. Just accept that. There's not one way that is superior over the others. And to believe that there is one way that is superior over the others is arrogance and ignorance. We're too busy arguing with each other over who's right that we completely miss the message. Think about how many people in history have died over this feud. Think about how many people died during the Crusades. It's estimated that 1.7 million people died during the Crusades. Killing over religion. Doesn't seem very godly to me. Think of the religious wars that are going on in the world today. Fighting over the differences. When really they're actually all the same. But people just can't seem to make that connection. You have to see the insanity in that. Don't focus on the differences. Focus on the similarities and you'll be able to see the message. The message is the key. And the message is that it all starts in the mind. It's your mind that creates your reality. There is a higher power, one higher power, an energy field, whatever you want to call it, but it's your mind that influences that higher power. That's the message. But like I said, you still have to know how to communicate with the universe effectively in order to get what you want. You still have to know how to pray effectively. Now, I made a separate video that explains how to do that in more detail. The video is called Law of Attraction, Advanced Manifestation Techniques, Tips, and Troubleshooting. Now, the video uses more of a Law of Attraction terminology, but like I said, it's all the same. It's all the same regardless if you're praying to God or praying to the universe. Just don't focus on the language, focus on the message like I've been saying. So if you want more information on that, then check out that video or go ahead and leave a link in the description below. So I hope you now have a better understanding of just how powerful the mind is and how significant it is when it comes to creating a reality. Because I really don't think that most people are aware of that. Because if they did, then they would be more conscious in taking better care of their minds. They wouldn't be constantly destroying it with drugs and alcohol. They wouldn't be eating the unhealthy diets that they eat. They would be more conscious of their thoughts. They wouldn't be filling their heads with the usual negative content because all that negative stuff pollutes the mind, which will reflect in your reality. Because what it really comes down to is that whatever you program your mind with determines your reality. So if you want to be able to consciously influence your reality, then you have to learn how to control your mind and you have to know how to program it effectively. You want to program your mind with what you want rather than letting other people program it for you. But most people have no clue how to do that. So I created a guide for you guys that explains exactly how to do that. The guide explains how the mind works and how to program the mind effectively and it goes over all the different things that affect your state of mind so that you'll be aware of those things. And you could use that information to shift your state of mind in whatever direction that you want and create the reality that you desire. So if you want that information then check out that guide. You can access that guide through my website. Here's the link to where you can access it. I hope this video was able to open up your minds a little bit more and expand your consciousness. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I got a lot more mind blowing videos on their way. Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.